Let's explore how technology alters culture and life with a regular on the show, Shakis. We're going to talk through some high school day history, digital parenting, and the impact of the internet on society. Let's dive into the internet's influence, multiple managing multiple online identities and relationships and the strain that can put on you. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, his uh, life in hip hop and its uh, impact on culture, the media's evolving landscape. We're going to talk a little bit at the end about the future of AI and its influence on us in the world. So this is a great one. I always enjoy sitting down and talking with Shakis. I think you will too. Let's get it. Welcome to the Warrior Mindset Podcast. We are your guide as you make your way through life, getting better 1% every day. We believe that life is lived and true victory won through adversity. Nothing easy is ever worth it. We believe in the warrior ethos and support those that choose to walk that path. Good. We're good. Um, my oldest is coming home. He's been in Clemson. Okay. For a couple weeks and it'll be good to see him. Like just visiting? Yeah, he would get down okay, for the cool. weekend. Yeah. Yeah. He's um does he like coming home or third year architecture like, student? Uh, no, he loves, I mean, he still likes us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My kids like me. <laughs> um, yeah, we're lucky that way. Yeah. It could be it could be real bad, you know. Yeah. My son could, um he's eleven now. So he's at that he's at I can feel it pulling away. You know what I mean? Mm. Like he's at that space where um he likes to be with mom and dad, particularly dad, when it's just me and him. Oh, I see. But if it's like his friends are around, it's kind of like, go. Yeah, yeah um, I get that. You know, go away. We were the same way. Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. Oh, totally. <laughs> I want to be around. Totally. But my mom, you know, I, you know, we're from that, a different era. Yeah. Like my mom yeah. wasn't around. You know? Yeah, we she talked was working. about working. Mm-hmm. You know, so it wasn't like picking we're constantly up, up our kids, but. And, yeah, we are. <laughs> we're like, tracking them on our phones, bro. <laughs> I don't do that. And you know what? We just got a phone. Oh, he just got a phone. He just got a phone. We broke down and got him a phone. We waited a lot longer than most people. Yeah, definitely. Eleven. Well, I mean, that's. I, I'm a media literacy educator, Gene. Yeah, you're like, stay away from gotta, the internet. I got to walk the walk, <laughs> you know. Um, and I try to put into practice the things I talk about. And so yeah. for for, and we he doesn't have any. He has an Instagram account, mm. but it's really his mom's old Instagram account that we gave him access to once he has the phone really huh. but we have control because instagram has controls in it um but he doesn't have a snapchat or a tiktok or anything like that um even though he he's already asked and we were like mm, no 15 maybe <laughs> okay you no know? right. 15 maybe because um what's important for her and i um is his ability to decipher information yeah and right for sure that what what i think we are not thinking about when we give people these devices kid or not yeah. is the access to information it's just a barrage which i noticed very early when he was like six or seven years old he would you know dad did you know this and i was like where did you get that from <laughs> i also watch this video on youtube and i'm just like all right I can t- you can get access to anything yeah, for real. And so I want I personally desire for him to build up his ability to, to decipher information yeah. and then he can have access to Snapchat or TikTok and things like that. But he's already asked to all my friends have Snapchat. Can I have subject? No. Well they um can you tell me why? Yes, the, I can tell the, you why. The other thing about that too is is bullying. Like Ooh. my my youngest son is, was exposed to some of that. There there was a group of kids that were kind of Picking on, not like you know, you're so dumb or whatever. Like they used to pick on us. Yeah, I don't know. you 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 you're cool. You probably weren't picked on in oh, I <laughs> middle school where I was oh, picked man. on. Yes. Um, yeah, but it was just like you know, rumor. Like they were like, there's always that kid in school where you know, people were like he lives in a you know dumpster yeah. or whatever. Like whatever his stories, <laughs> you know, and he was sort of party to some of that, and it was like he couldn't get away from it. Ah, uh, you know what I mean. 
Yeah. It was just like, shit, it's in it. You know, they're like messaging him this stuff. Yeah. Instead of, you know, when we were kids, it's like, well, they would say it and you just go home. On the bus. You know what I mean? Like, it's just on the bus. Punch him and go home. Oh, you got to fight. Like, you you know can't I mean? do that. Like, it just, it wouldn't go away. And, you it know, it follows you. And we, he finally had to confront it and they did. And, you know, it's gone now. But I think about that, like some poor kids that just can't get away from it. And it's like, man, man. They're, they're Snapchatting you and all kinds of stuff. I was talking to a friend of mine, uh, Ashley Herring. She works in education. She came down, spent some, some time with me um, during the summer. And uh, <laughs> we were both talking about how, you know, the way that we were raised in the generation we were raised in, you know, our ability to adapt mm -hmm. to, to, you know, uh, the way that in the now, the way that uh, society is operating now is like you're thinking about being mindful of what you say and how you treat people and how these things can have ramifications. And we were both like, yo, we used to. I didn't care. Humiliate kids. Like, I remember, like, humiliating kids when I was in school. Yep. Like, I mean, yep. literally. Oh, you cut them down. Every, you know, that, oh, he smells like pee. You know what I mean? You know, sp <laughs> oh, smacking kids. Yeah, up whatever. Yeah. Head. Like, we were, yeah. we were brutal. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, however, you know, that kid that you're picking on, granted, he has to live with that every time he comes to school. Mm -hmm. He doesn't live, have to live with it when he goes home. <laughs> Right. And in this day and age, they got to get it at school and then they get it online. And mm -hmm. they, so I see why it's all know, night suicide. Yeah. You know, mental, you know, trying to be. We had this whatever. We had this dude in. in everybody wants you to be so you don't get. Uh, yeah. You know. We had this dude in high school that we everybody picked on. And uh, <laughs> I remember we had our 30 year. God, I'm old. No, it, that was 25. 25, like, like high school still reunion. Old. Still old. And he did have, <laughs> yeah, still old. He did, he did have one guy that was like his good friend. And they were still good friends. Like, they lived down the road from each other. And I remember we were at the 25-year thing. And I was talking with the guy's friend. I was like, where's, where's he at? Like, he should come out. And he's like, I don't think he's going to come out. I was like, message him. See if he'll come out. He messaged him. He's like, everybody's here and they want to see you. And he wrote back, tell them all. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. I was like, hey, that's 25 years later. They remember that shit. They remember. <laughs> I, I, I do. I remember girls that dissed me in second grade. So <laughs> oh, I yeah. definitely remember. Yeah. You know, I definitely. So if I remember, then I know that they remember. Yeah. And I think about that sometimes, man. I think about some kids that I just straight and because I was picked on when I was really young. I was mm. really small. I was really smart. I grew up in a really rough neighborhood, really rough cousins, mm. but I was a, a real soft kid. Yeah. You know, I was a mama's boy. Oof. I was, um, you know, I did not like to fight. I did not like confrontations. So, you know, I was a very sweet kid. Right, right. And you could look at kid photos of me and see like, wow, this is you can just <laughs> now that I go back and look at those pictures, I go, wow, it was a really, really right. You know, you can you're like, I would have picked on me. You'll understand <laughs> this. This is one of the reasons why I like talking to you. You'll understand this because uh one of the things that I know that um when you are someone that has a, a Either you come from a tough background or you are in a place where you have fighting experience, mm. right? One of the things that you can't front is heart. Like you can right. see it in somebody's eyes. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much you talk or junk, junk <laughs> they talk. Like when you're face to face with that person, you're looking at, you can see it. Like yeah. it's something that I try to explain to kids yeah. all the time because I yeah. think they think like I used to think, <laughs> you know, like, oh, I can, I can act it or I can, no. Nah. can't fake it. I can look you in the eye and I can tell <laughs> you don't have it. You don't have it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which and is I'm what, a shark. Yeah. <laughs> which is what you most fighters it. would tell you. Yeah, you you know, it. boxers and MMA guys, they're like, oh, I, as soon as he got in the ring, I knew. Yeah, I knew. Because I could see it in his eye. Mm -hmm. And um, so for me, it was like I adapted. Mm -hmm. You know, I went from the kid that, you know, did get beat up all the well, time. If you get beat up to, enough, eventually you. You know, figure it out. And I just so happened to grow up with the kind of cousins that were like, we can't take having a mm. cousin who's a crybaby. So they literally. We got to fix you. First, they just would fight me intentionally. <laughs> right. Like, I remember one time they literally took me in the woods. I think they tricked me to be like, we're going to pick, you know, uh, 
um, back then we had like honeysuckle and and, right. and uh, blackberries. And they were like, yeah, sure, I'll come on that. And then I went in the You're woods like, Let's pick and it was like 13 of my cousins. I grew up in one of those neighborhoods. It was a lot of us, you know. And they were like, yeah, we can't take you being no punk. And I was already crying, like, please. Oh, my God. And they just beat me until I fought back. And so after that, they would just start <laughs> setting up fights for me, right? Holy crap. So, like, over time, I developed that look. <laughs> but the point I'm, re reason why I'm bringing that up is because I had the unique um, experience mm. that allowed me to recognize both sides of that look. Yeah, like sure. to know when you yeah. have it and to know when you don't yeah, have it. Right. And um that um thing that the reason why I brought it up because I was like, I don't know how that translates to today. Yeah. Because a lot of what the students go through or kids go through now, you don't even see people. You can't. Yeah. So there's no way to really because yeah. I was thinking like, all right, well, how do you develop? Then, I don't know how they do it. You know what I mean? Because you can develop a rhythm. And granted, for me, it was like becoming a chameleon. Like I had to yeah. be this person and then transform yeah. it in this person. So it would it would literally be like, you ever seen Fruitvale Station? Yes. Yeah. It, that was very kin to how I grew up. Yeah. Where I, it's like on one hand, he's like the sweetest kid. And mm -hmm. then the next instant he mm -hmm. could be. But it was my environment that made me that way. Like I didn't really have a choice. It was either that or get my ass kicked every day. Yeah. So it's difficult to understand on the outside looking in. That movie really gives you yeah, an insight cool. on how yeah. someone develops that yeah. kind of split personality. Um, and how, you know, but it's a, uh, you begin to adapt. And I was like, man, so what about today when the vast majority of their interaction when it comes to bullying yeah. and confrontation or you're not cool and thinking you are cool? Because it's both ways, right? Like, on one on, on one way in social media, they're trying to be something they're not yeah. to the camera. Right. Right. But it's also people trying to be something they're not in the way that they bully them in the comments. Yeah. Right. So it's two sides of wow. the same That's deep. uninteraction, Ugh. personal interaction coin, right? So are you saying the internet's not real? <laughs> it's, on, not real. Right. <laughs> it's not real. It's not real. real. It's not it's real. So not real. It's not real, Jim. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how. Man. I, I, yeah, you know what's what's funny too is you tell me that story. I've talked to a lot of Gen X, and I think you and I are like right on the mm -hmm. one or two more years we cut off. But we, you know, I was a teenager in the '80s. So are you? Same here. That tell the same story of like, well, I hung out with this group, and then I could hang out with that group, and then I could fit in with that group, and then I could fit in with my group. Yeah. And there's so many successful people I talk to that can do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that seems like I obviously I'm not a teenager in you know high school now, but I do talk yeah. to my my sons and I don't know that there's a lot of that. I don't know. I don't know. I'd like to know. You know what? But how do you do that if you can't really interact with people? Good question. You know, because it seems like and you know, I, you know, again, my son's only 11, so he's yeah. he's brand new to the teenager world. He's not really he's there getting there yet. though. Um but I definitely see a homogeneity. Is that the word? Like a likeness, a yes, sameness. Yes, right. Um, however, I don't know. I don't know because you know you're so. When I think about my, you know, I I would call them like my friends from the hood or my family friends. Yeah, you had like my. Then I had like my school friends. Yeah. Then I had like my white friends, and then I had like uh like girlfriends mm -hmm. and then i had like girlfriends and you know what i mean like, kind of like a different person but it was like group. a little bit a little bit for me definitely yeah. like but i know guys people that weren't right you know um shout out to you know one of my one of my good friends when i was growing up was this white kid named sean love literally my first white friend it's a cool name shout out sean if you see this i love you and your mom <laughs> and your uh dad and your uh, wife y'all are awesome um, we're still cool to this day, but Sean had the opposite thing. Like he, everybody, he didn't, he never was not him. <laughs> it was so wild. Hmm. Like he could be with all my black friends and still be same Sean. guy. Huh. He could be with all his white friends and still be Sean. Like well, still, unique. still yeah. same asshole. Right. Great guy, <laughs> but funny asshole. <laughs> you know what I mean, he was just Sean. Like at all times. Hey. Uh, even when we be around girls, he still be Sean. Huh. Other girls, still Sean. Around my yeah. mom, still Sean. I mean, not 
as much curse words. Sure. But still Sean sure. at home with his mom. Same Sean. It used to amaze me because I, mm. I would look at him and be like, How are you doing? How that? are you doing that? Because when I would do it, I'm a I chameleon. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. this way right. with these folks, yeah. then this way, and I can't hang around. Like I remember times mm -hmm. in middle school and high school where like another set of friends would come around, mm -hmm. a set of friends, and I would be like, I can't. How do I fit in there? Yeah. Or yeah. You guys can't see me over here or mm -hmm. here I'm talking because like I know. You know what I mean? Like I gotta yeah. I'm I'm a different person today than I or was. Or like out on the schoolyard, it'll be like circles of people. Yeah. And oh you, yeah. You know what I mean? They're like all like before class, like all in a big circle mm -hmm. and they're just like talking. And you I don't know about you, but I would just go from like group to group. Group to group. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's up? But I was the I was the the chameleon. Yeah. I was the I was the shapeshifter. So it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't the same, but I think it's a real skill, you know, I, I, uh, in a positive you know, way, Let, it, let's, it, let's frame that. Yeah. A, I wasn't like trying to convince somebody or something. I was just hanging out. <laughs> right. I just wanted to be right. accepted by everybody. I, yeah. I just, I wanted to be accepted you know? too. I just took it too far. It was more like, oh, you see. know, I wanted to, I wanted to be accepted so bad. I would be whatever this group uh, needed me to in, be yeah, okay. as opposed to being myself gotcha. around. Gotcha. I didn't know how to do that. Gotcha. Um, because again, like I told you with my cousins, that was the first, that instance that I had with them where I had to fight was the first time I was like, oh, I need multiple personalities. Mm. And so it just kept going after yeah, that, Okay, which is what is interesting because I'm at a point in my life now where it's going in the reverse, where everything is coming back to me, uh -huh. one person. And I'm like closing all the multiple personalities. You know what I mean? It's tiring. Man, it's it exhausting. Was so exhausting. <laughs> it's like, and so yeah. tiring. Yeah. And it was so confusing for the people that love me because they'd be like, mm -hmm. well, I don't know you. Who are you? You know what I mean? And uh, and it, it it got complicated for me to even keep track of. Yeah, I got you. And so um, mm -hmm. and it just made my relationships very um, I couldn't really have good deep relationships because people, you know, you can't you in order for people to trust you, they have to know you. True. And unfortunately. Or a lot of well, a lot of people don't understand, which is strange to me now, but I completely understand because I was there. Is the only way people can know you is if you know you. Mm. People can't know you if you don't know yourself. Right. You, you like let because, that go. Yeah. Right. Because all they know is the version of you that you curated for mm. them. And it took me. I'm still mm. like weaning myself off of all of these versions of me even with my own voice like i remember over the past really like three or four years i'm still doing it now like just learning to talk like me all the time mm. instead of being around some people and talking one way and then being around other people and talking another way like that was not that you know even something small like that you kind of uh you have to figure out i don't know about figure out we have to work on like all right i need to kind of be me and it's funny we're talking about that in the context of mm. kids because that's something that i'm i really push with my son like i want to, you be, to be you comfortable in your own skin yeah. like you really I are think that's an awesome kid you right. know what i mean like don't let what other people are doing it and and <laughs> it's so weird because i'm also i'm i also have very arrogant narcissistic tendencies and i see him doing that too and so mm. a part of me is like ah oh, it's really good like, <laughs> and you're like Wait. you don't give a shit what nobody thinks Awesome, but at the same yeah. time, it's like, all right, slow down. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know I get you. I, mean? I don't want yeah. you to so not give a shit that you're just treating everybody else like right. you know. You don't want to raise a weirdo, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Or a jerk. You know what well, I mean? That, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's kind of the yeah. You you have a son. Uh, I was sort of like, I don't have a lot of rules for my boys. Well, they're almost men now, but like, wow. it's it's just I have two rules, and I and I don't be a dick. Yes. And you got to do something. Yeah. Like, this, that's pretty much it. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, like, but, you know, you got to be a dick covers a lot, though. You kind of do something covers a lot. <laughs> it too. Does. So those are yeah. two great, good, two good yeah. umbrellas. Yeah. I mean, you just, you just got to, like, get up and have purpose, you know? Like, I don't want you living a life without purpose. How did you develop those two rules? Do I have no remember? idea. I, I have no idea. I think it mostly, I mean, it probably comes from my dad, honestly. Just emulating him, you know? He always had purpose when he did anything yeah. and he was, uh, he was not a dick, but he was very, um, clear and very matter of fact oh, man. with other people. Like I, I watched him do business and, you know, he's very fair and very clear, but you know, there's any hint of like, 
silliness or whatever. He's, he's we're done. Like no emote, just done. You know. Interesting. But it was it was you know maybe that's probably now that I think about it, it's probably where it comes from. Just you know, live your life. You know, don't be. You don't have to be nice. You know. Yeah, you just really have to be. What does the Marine say? Be polite, but nice to be polite to everyone, but nice to no one. You know what I mean? There's a I, difference, right? I always tell uh, uh, my thing with my son, well, really everybody around me, but certainly my son, is kindness and fairness. Yeah. Not so much niceness. Yeah, exactly. But be kind, you know? I don't know about being nice because I don't really. You can nice yourself right out of business. You can nice yourself out of a house, out yeah, of dude. money, out of a girl, Whew. out of a relationship. You know what I mean? But if you're kind. Um, yeah, it comes back. Um, it comes back. If yeah. you're dick, it comes back too. I've seen that. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Well, dude, you um speaking of doing something, mm -hmm. you just got off of a big high. Okay. With uh hip hop family day. Mm -hmm. I wanna mm -hmm. I've been meaning to talk to you about that. Yeah. Was correct me, I'm I'm woefully inadequately prepared. Is this good. the first one you've done in a couple of years? No. Was so it, yeah, you've so the smaller one though, right? Um, so this in the past. is this is our first hip hop family day back outside since okay. the pandemic. That's that's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. Cuz we in, did in a very one, not clear way. I said. <laughs> that's what I meant. We did one during uh, the pandemic with Rockham inside mm -hmm. people mass. Um uh, but it of course because it was during the pandemic it wasn't incredibly well attended is This is the first one like it used to be. Yes, yes. This is the first one like it was yeah. in 2019 yeah. where it was outside. Right. And, thousands of people you know a little bit smaller crowd than we're used to but it was also really hot that day and we were in a new location people and, people kind of learning about stuff again yeah people kind of learning about it again and i gotta give a shout out to to the chief of uh uh hip-hop family day love and hip-hop fabric mm -hmm. is all my brother um the work that he's done to really protect hip-hop culture here and really take love peace and hip-hop and world famous hip-hop family day and really kind of create this house for hip hop culture in Colombia, and um, it was so great to see. This year was really like his first year in trying all the things that he had been working on over the years. Because originally, right. um, I was running World Famous Hip Hop Family Day and Love Peace and Hip Hop, and then in 2016, I stepped down from that to go over into the film world and yeah. start OTR Media Group and all that. And so, um, this is also the first like real year that he's kind of taking the helm of everything too um since the pandemic in 19 since we were outside and so um it was great to be a part of hip hop family day this year for me personally because it allowed me this is the first time we did hip hop family day where I felt like I was really totally myself okay like, okay I know that people um, you know, being back into the Shakista beats <laughs> and it, un yeah. understanding where that fits in my life, right, right, right. understanding how to feel, not not feeling like, oh, I'm turning it on for this day. And that's yeah. how I used to feel. You know, I'm turning it on for this day and then yeah. I'm trying to I got to go back to work. But I got to go back. To, you know what I mean? I got to go back to being Clark Kent. And then like now it's like um, yeah. this is the first time where it was like I didn't have. I didn't feel weird if somebody saw me that was from the Sherrard world at Hip Hop Family Day or the Shakis world. At, it was all the same to me because I'm, I'm becoming more comfortable with the fact that all of it is is me. And uh, so that's what made it so beautiful for me because I felt probably more free than I've ever felt before. And uh, freedom is such a such a asset when you are hosting mm. or performing. Right, you have to be as free as possible yeah, because it allows you to be yourself and something about performing or hosting when you're more yourself and more free, it allows the audience to be oh, they feel more it. engaged. You know what I mean? And so they connect with you better. Yeah. They connect with you better. You connect with them better. And that's what I felt when I was out there that whole day. Like it was a real strong connection. Um, and, uh, I, I knew that had a lot to do with this new place that I'm in. So shout out to, to fast awesome. for even saying, yo, come through host again this year. I was like, of course, you know, awesome. it's like, you know, it's, it's almost like, you know, uh, like, 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 you know, I'm one of the founders of hip hop family day, but it's like, yeah. now it's like, you know, we have like lifetime board members. I'm like yeah. a lifetime 
Exactly. You know what I mean? And so um I'm I'm really excited about the future of it. Um always looking for opportunities to continue to grow it and share it. Um happy that we have an incredible leader um to lead the way and then um uh, whatever I can do consistently to promote hip hop culture, push yeah. hip hop culture. It's still the number one culture on planet earth. You know, however mm-hmm. people want to, it's in every commercial, it's in every ad. Yeah, like, it's mainstream now. <laughs> it's mainstream, you know what I mean? And so no, no matter how people try to wiggle themselves out of it or kind of get around it, like you're going to use it because it is, it's ubiquitous. I mean, it's, it's you know, uh, Slick Rick is what, 58? Oh, oh, dude! Nas yeah. turned fifty Come today. Yeah. Like you know, these dudes are grandfathers. You, you know, what I mean? hip hop so. culture is about to enter the realm that like rock and roll culture is, where we, you know we have like yep. the Rolling Stones where they're eighty. Yep. You know, we got the you know they're still touring. You're it's about to see touring. that. Yeah, you're, you're about, about to start having for the that. first time. Like you know, we have hip hop people out here doing this. Seventy years old now. Yeah, uh, Curtis <laughs> Blow headline. Curtis Blow sixty eight. Think about it. Yeah. Are they still cool though? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's cool. You know, and I, I was um because you know you worry the same thing, right? About rock stars, right? You you're like, wait, was he is still gonna is Mick still gonna mix? Or you know, yeah. Um, and you know, it's interesting because um hip hop was one of those cultures like rock, um, but um where it uh you know is powered by the youth. Yeah, but for sure. Yeah, of course. I mean, I mean it has to be. Yeah. It has to be. And at the same time, what hip hop always didn't have that rock did have was a beautiful respect and following yeah, of right. aging artists yeah, right. where that's new for hip hop. Like we weren't yeah. used to people being cool after 35. Yeah. Right. When I was coming up, it was like, oh, you're 40. Yes. Yeah. Retire. I don't even you know, know how old you dude, are. Go get a Just job. Away. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, right. stop wearing your hat like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But now, at 68 years old, you watch yeah. Curtis Blow come out in an all white suit yeah. with a white ball cap on, right. with Curtis Blow on the top, I with do a that. chain on. It's like, <laughs> I want to do that, yeah. you know? And, um, you know, you, 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 and, and folks like Nas and Jay Z and mm-hmm. Killer Mike and even Fat Rat Dazar, like, they're showing us how to grow and still be yourself. What are we going to do when Jay Z's 71? Up there and doing something. Oh man, I mean, we almost he's, no, he's on the way. That's I mean, what I'm saying. He's about 20 years. It's gonna away be weird, now, but it's gonna be weird. <laughs> and at the same time, it's gonna be very similar. You know, now yeah. I look at, you know, I watch concerts of Axel. I oh, was a gosh. huge Axel Rose fan when yeah. I was a kid, and I watch right. concerts now. I'm like, he's in there somewhere. He's, he's in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's in there somewhere. You know. Um, same way with you know when you look at somebody like Slash and yeah, those yeah. guys that um I really grew up on yeah. you know that are still around um I'm not the, the Rolling Stones era is a little bit yeah my me time, too the, uh, they were just the oldest the one Guns I think and of. Roses and yeah. when I see Run DMC perform yeah. or when I see uh, oh man yeah I didn't think about them holy yeah, crap I yeah they predate some of those guys Tommy yeah. Lee yeah. or you know I used to follow all those guys oh, yeah. that was that's all my era right. and so seeing them now um Salt and Pepper yeah, and all yeah. them it's like. <laughs> even even like the artists and so you know i i love the fact now that um with what i've been able to do personally by coming back into <clears throat> myself and really owning um uh all the different sides of me including the hip hop side of me is really helped you know my work i see all of these places in my work and in otr where i'm like man we need to infuse more hip-hop here and more hip-hop over here this could be cooler and that could be cooler and oh shit it should be cooler because it's cool. kind of like all yeah. of a you know extension of it's awesome. of me and um and it's really is really clarifying um my leadership abilities mm. my how i curate the work that i do how i'm talking when i'm talking whenever i'm podcast or, or with a group of kids or mm-hmm. with a school or whoever and so it's really um it really has helped me personally professionally um and shout yeah. out to the koga center too for for letting hip-hop family day let loose and you That's know pretty rad. shout out to, to the whole team over there um thank y'all and, and and the university of south carolina for letting us on their campus doing move-in day which is really dope <laughs> that was cool it, it was, was good wild timing. it was good timing it, it, you know, it kind of was a good time. It was just hot, you know. Well, it South was just Carolina, hot, man. But what you gonna do? 
you know, I'm looking forward to the future and, and, and whichever way, you know, Fat Rat Desire, I've told him so many times, like, whichever way you go, bro, I'm right there behind you. I'm following you. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm out. With, what, if you need me to be an engine, if you need me yeah. to be a transmission, like, whatever you need, like, I'm there. <laughs> That's cool. And, uh, you know, I, I'm really looking forward to it as it continues to grow and 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 represent a, a section of Columbia and Columbia's history mm. that I think is important to to uh, the city. It's one of the things about Columbia that I think, um, you know, Columbia has, I think everybody that's here or from here or lives here, particularly if you're involved, if you're in the mix, you know, Columbia struggles with an identity. Yeah. And I think part of that problem is we don't own the thing that's ours, you know? Right. Either we want to bring in something from somewhere else or we want to make something look like it's bigger than Columbia, as yeah. opposed to saying, how about we just own what's ours? Just do it. Yeah. And that's what hip hop family day is to me. Like it represents saying, you know, we're going to own South Carolina, particularly Columbia hip hop culture. Yeah. That's and we're cool. going to be proud of it and we're going to build on it and we're going to treat it with respect and we're going to treat it as, 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 it, as if it's an entity, if it's a thing. Right. So that people go, so, you know, it's more, it's just like anything else. So when people visit mm. a place, they go, I want to see that because right. I've heard about this thing and I can only see this thing here. If and I'm, there. I'm huh. always encouraging wherever I am uh, in whatever circles I'm in in Colombia to ask people to double down on that. Like, you know, that's how you make your city awesome is by doubling down on the things that you have, not by doing stuff that everybody else has. You got to double down on the things that you have. No different. Than I love that about business. you, man. I know. I love that about you. Every time I've ever talked to you, you there's some people I talk to that all they talk about is, well, I got to get out of here. Mm -hmm. I don't even know why I'm still here. Like, but you never done that. You're always like, this is where I'm from. This is what I do. This is where I'm going to stay. Jing, you know, this as we a business, business owner, here. That is, that's how you grow your business. Yeah. You got to double down on what it is you do well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And really honing on that. And the more you hone on that, the minute someone thinks about that service you offer, That's they your, think about you. Yeah, right. Because you've honed in on mm -hmm. that thing that you do well, as mm -hmm. opposed to what I see a lot of folks doing is trying to be. Yeah, they're bouncing around. Are trying to fit in. And it's like, I don't remember you. You're mm -hmm. not coming top of mind for me mm -hmm. because you're not honing in on the thing that you do. With, or you haven't taken the time to figure out what it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So to me, it's the same thing. It, it's all the same mm. to me. Let me ask you this. You you know, we were talking about, you know, split personalities, whatever, yeah. whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. Was this year or have you had a, an instance where look, I don't know, here's how I set it up. So I, I produced conferences for, you know, 12 years, or whatever. Yeah. It and I thank you. And I traveled around the country mm -hmm. and met because, you know, I don't know if it's like this with what you do, but it wasn't just about my conference. I had to go to the other little groups and areas and other cities to, to kind of create relations and bring them in. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. But in every city, there was a group of people kind of doing the same things we're doing in our city. Yep. There was this group in every mm -hmm. city. And the, the, the trick was to find that group and kind of, you know, infiltrate it maybe, and then maybe you can pull them in. But there was one year in particular, and it was kind of like, I don't even remember the 2015 maybe, but it was like, we had kind of like a, a, pinnacle year of of the conference it was like the one for the record books and all those other groups came it was weird as fuck <laughs> because it was like oh you're those people and then you're those people and then those people met and then they're you know that and then like i've got family here and i'm like my family's here and then the people i work with are here and then the conference people are here and it was like all these different groups who we were talking about i'm kind of different a little bit but they were all there mm -hmm. seeing who i am <laughs> In all these different scenarios, we met all these people, and it was just this weird, like, mind trick for me that was like, wow, like, they all know me in a different way, you know, what but they seeing, don't know that. So it sounds like what you're Does saying, it make sense? you're seeing all, it's almost like a, uh, I, don't, I don't forgot what you call that diagram, but you know, you're seeing like a all big across, Venn diagram. Yeah, of like, like a big Venn, and you're seeing all of these sections cross the center. Right? It was weird. At one time. It was real weird. Have you yeah. ever had a moment like that? Yeah, that's what it was like this year, Hip Hop Family Day for me, is feeling like I'm in the center of all of those sections as opposed to feeling like it, I'm in this section over there. Yeah. In this section. No, it felt like I was in the center of all those intersections. It really got me out of my comfort zone. 
Really? It was the opposite for me. Where well, I felt like oh, and you felt at I home, felt incredibly at oh, home that's for awesome. the first time. That's awesome. Because all of these intersections were were there, and I and and it's so interesting. Uh, there's a, a guy I've known a long a long time, Al Donnell from Charlotte. Um, hip hop guys done hip hop shows mm. and concerts and stuff. I've known him for years and years and years, and he's come hip hop family down and off. He was there, and then seeing people from. Uh, my family were there and then my son was there and then uh, my lady was there and then of course czar and kingpin mm -hmm. and lj and all the founders of hip-hop family they were there and then having new artists there that know me and then people that do business with me they were there and, you know it was awesome you know what i mean yeah. and so it was like to me it was it didn't feel weird it felt like this is how it would have felt weird if i was still old me mm -hmm. but new me is more like yep this is your life. You've been kind of working like on that for the past yeah, couple of years. Very, very, yeah. for, very. For active. me, it was a real awakening moment of like, I've got to like, you know, I got to clean some of this stuff up. I got to, you know, I just have to be authentically, you know, I can't like say something this way to this person and say something that way to that, you know, like, yeah. well, this group from DC, they're very buttoned down. So, so I was very professional, <laughs> but the group from Atlanta, they getting drunk and they crazy. So let me do this. I mean, this is how it broke down. I mean, Charlotte was, you know, very businessy too. But you know, <laughs> Charleston folks were like, they're ready to drink wine and party, you know. Yeah. It's like different crews, but I gotta still be me. I can't be them. How did you, you know, how did that react re, uh understanding that when you when you thought back on on it and you begin to understand your role in it, how did that begin to affect you personally and business wise after that? Well, it made me realize that what I was doing I don't want to make it sound like it was a bad thing. I realized I was being a salesman. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ooh, I realized that way to put it. I was going into those communities in those different cities with an agenda. Yeah. And you know, duh. I mean, you everybody run has the, an you agenda. It. Yeah. But it was I wasn't transparent about it. Yeah. And I feel like over the years those relationships fell off. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of put them away. I'm not doing that business so, yeah. you know, whatever. But the the people that I did kind of authentically connect with, I'm still friends with them. We still talk. We still text. That's good. You know, and I'm like, wow, it, you know, I was, it's not, it's not a bad thing to be a salesman. I mean, you have, if you sell shit for a living, you have to sell stuff. I mean, you still have to make a living, but yeah. I don't, don't like, it was just, I wasn't transparent, you know? Right. And if, I think it hurt in the long run. It I was hurt what I was trying to build. Ask you if you felt like, you was just being a salesman to them or did you also feel like you were being a salesman to yourself oh for sure yeah for sure because i you know i was doing it but i was like i'm doing it because i'm growing this thing and it's you know it's all for the best and again it's not a negative thing to do that but it, it's not sustainable not when you are selling yourself i mean when yeah. i say and when i say selling yourself i specifically mean you're selling yourself something that isn't true. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're like, I'm like, cool. You're selling it to them. That's mm -hmm. one thing to sell mm -hmm. it to them. But you can't get lost into thinking that you are that because you're selling yourself the same lie. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Because essentially, yeah. selling is like marketing. You know, it's all mm -hmm. half truths. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? For sure. But when you start buying mm -hmm. the half truths, that is when you become, like I said earlier, a yep. person that nobody can recognize, that loved ones yep. can't recognize, because they're like, okay, which version of you is actually? That's right. Version? And when it gets big enough, which you know, we we weren't like we're not famous. We had we had a, I say we we had a whole team, but you were famous to those. We, folks. we were pretty successful, but at a certain point, you know, when it got beyond South Carolina to Charlotte to Atlanta to the Southeast to Austin to DC to you know Boston to then to Seattle then to you know, Austin. it's not sustainable to like have all these different relationships you know what I mean? you can't do that like your brain can't handle uh -uh, it your like, body can't whoa. handle it either, yeah you know yeah and then you start doing that as opposed to being able to scale like yeah. you can't you're scale just, when you're you, you essentially just taking you know it reminds me of a, mm -hmm. uh you know you see those old uh um i were reading books about how they would take a guy and tie a horse to each uh appendage oh yeah, <laughs> like, yeah that's what it ways. feels like that's what it's like for real so that's what you're doing yeah. to yourself yeah. and that's not there's no way that could mm -hmm. be sustainable as opposed to doing the opposite where you're bringing everybody in yeah you. that's right and that's how that's how that's how individual brand scale yeah that's I how guess company so. scale yeah. you know because they're pulling everybody into the 
umbrella of you know nike does a great job of that i'm pulling everything they do all of these yeah. things into right. nike which is building nike yep. as opposed to thinning mm -hmm. the brand out you know what i mean and so it, that philosophy works the same when it comes to your personal life i think i think so too you know and I, it certainly has um yeah and that was me i was i was you know my personal world and i had a business world and i had that conference world yeah. and it was like i gotta engineer these things yeah. And it just, I mean, it burns you out. I used to even do the same thing with Love, Peace, and Hip Hop and Hip Hop Family Day. I well, yeah, like, you, right, I mean, you have Love, Peace, and Hip Hop over here. I'm OTR yep. over here. Yep. I'm Shakis over here. I'm Sherrod over here. Well, that's, I, I mean? when I first, when I first started to know who you were, I thought you were yeah. two different people. I get it. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I completely I was like, understand. wait, no, that's, that's Sherrod. And they're like, no, it's Shakis. I'm like, the hell are you, uh... it's no. <laughs> and they're like, yeah. they're like, dude, trust me. I'm like, okay. All right. And then, uh think it is i met him like, before he was not shaky at some point totally i'm like what do i call you <laughs> you're like i don't care I'm people like, would do that i need I to know show, i would show up people would be like do i call you Sherrard or Shakees? <laughs> i'm like yeah i was yeah. one of them that was my own fault and then i didn't even understand i was making this schizo and shout out to my boy kb like he 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 said it in the most magnificent way that i think i said on the podcast last time yeah, i was we, here when he was just like yo you're the only person I knew that was already an entity, but then decided to, to not, make another one. To make another one. <laughs> you know what I mean? He was like, he was like, it, it's not called the Dana Owens show, bro. It's yeah. called the Queen Latifah show. Right. What are you doing? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I think, you know, yeah. I think it, early on I was thinking of, you know, like, okay, well, I gotta create this thing that could maybe be packaged up and sold. Because you want right. So you want to sell it. Yeah, so you want to do the whatever's yeah. going to attract people to yeah, buy it. Yeah. And I was thinking that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I was thinking branding. That's how branding happens. You right. create a a, a, a little monster. Yeah, and, yeah. For them. Yeah. Oh, but these people, like you said, they like to drink wine and get sloshed. All right. Let me do that for them. Oh, yeah. but these guys, they're, you know, no offense to Landon Charles. You. <laughs> you know, so let me rent a car and make sure I'm looking this way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because you're thinking sales. Yeah. And, uh, I'll, you know, a lot of times, I don't know if you feel this way, but I certainly feel like a lot of times we end up doing stuff like that because we don't have no frame of reference. Mm, could be. You know, for me, I had no mentors it was no, for that stuff. No, man, I was freestyling. Were, yeah, I nobody, was just well, there's nobody it. doing it. And I knew nobody that was doing mm -hmm. it. I had no, oh, at least nobody that was close enough for me to talk to. Right. And so it's one or of at least, things, let me say, I was arrogant enough to think no one else was doing come it. Come on now. That too. <laughs> I'm just being yeah. truthful. Yeah. Because <laughs> there were people doing it. I just I, was thinking I was the shit. What? <laughs> Nobody's doing this. There's nobody is only one me. If you not need like, it, you got to come to me. Not as good as I was. There's <laughs> no way. And uh, man, you know, which, you know, of course, arrogance. Um, well, that's why we started a business in the first place. Yeah. Well, I don't know about you. My 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 arrogance. original first business was started because I could do it better than everybody else. <laughs> and they should totally get me to do it because it's going to be more awesome than that guy. I don't know. And then I quickly realized possibly. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So possibly it certainly for me, I don't know, possibly, but yo, I mean, <laughs> it makes sense. You know, I mean, you obviously you think you can do it better than everybody else. That's why, why you're doing you, it, right? Doing obviously, it. when I think about it, yeah. I don't know if I thought well, that's the, that way, that's yeah. the rub in the creative industry, right? Like I, I only know that industry. I only know how to create things or Same. create things for other people. Yeah. There's a little bit of like ego that's got to be involved in that, right? Because oh, yeah. you got because they Definitely. somebody brings you an idea and you're like, yeah, I'll make that happen. I got you. Like, I don't know how to use Photoshop yet. Like, yeah. that was, you know, I figured that shit out. Of course. It's a little bit of the, like, I got it. What? You know how many deals? I just did a deal recently <laughs> where I was like, I don't know how many. Yeah, it's the same. You know, I have no idea how I'm going to get this done. But here's what I do know I know I can get it done. Yeah. So there's a little enough, bit of an ego. <laughs> I know enough pieces of parts. We can get you yeah, there. I, no, it's not even that. It's more like the, the ego, you yeah. know. Oh yeah, I get things done. Yeah. I can get this done. Yeah, but I, I think so. I think you it's, I mean? it's, it's good. Thing. It gets it makes you build things. Yeah, you know, you just can't let it consume you. You mentioned um, we were talking there. You mentioned like renting the right car so people see you. Yep. Do you or do you have friends who work hard to sort of produce an image of themselves? Yes. <laughs> no, definitely work very hard to yeah. produce an image of themselves, even with their own family. It's got to be exhausting. You know, not when I was younger, totally made sense to me. Yeah. That was my whole world. Yeah. Like, you know, you got to fake it till you make it, you know? Mm -hmm. So you just play in the role until, you know, that, that's what I thought was the way to be. And as I got older, I was like, ooh, 
you know, yeah, that's tiring. I remember feeling like I remember this feeling. I used to get off work from Genesis sometimes, and I would get in the car and be like, huh. mm. you know what I mean? Like literally be exhausted. Mm. I thought that was from work. Oh, sure. What it was from was me being You're this other person, that, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm creating this person mm. and just constantly doing that is yeah. work. Yeah. And I would get in the car and feel exhausted because I was being this character. And I didn't realize that till later. Mm. And so now I look at friends of mine or people that I know that work hard to be something that they're not. And it, it makes me tired. Yeah. You're like, like, Man. like the car you drive, Dude. the way you drive it, the way yeah. you dress, the way you dress, what like, you're doing, the way you talk. Always wear that shirt. Like, yeah. it's just kind of weird. It's like, what are you doing? You know, no, 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 no. We're going to, we're going to. Come over back here. I got I got a friend that like talks differently, like literally changes the tone. It's like right. bat, Batman. Yeah. <laughs> like and then, and then we're hanging out, and I'm like, and you know, that's you a, sound I, different. I don't know if you you know this, but that's always I don't know about always, but that for many years has been a difficult thing for a lot of black folks. I was it's I'm glad you brought difficult. that up. I was like struggling with a segue to pull bring that up. Yeah. I had a friend, uh, not really a friend, uh, a person I loosely knew, I guess he, a friend. And he brought that up on a like the very one of the very first shows I did, and I, there was a name. What is it called? There's a there's a name for it. Oh, code switching. A coding, yeah, yeah. Code switching. Code switching. Is um, how you, that's, have you struggled with that? I mean, I'm sure yeah. you have. Yeah, I, I was just telling you, like, is over that from the past Genesis? Couple of years, partly is what you're talking oh, about. Oh, definitely. Hmm. Um, um, when you are, and I don't even know if it's an exclusively black thing. But I can talk about it because I am black. I've only and heard about it in that black. context. However, it's something that many minority cultures feel like you have to do to be accepted by a majority. Over the years, I begin to realize that that's not an exclusively black thing. You just hear about it more from mm -hmm. black folks. Yeah, yeah. But when you are someone that is in a minority, you're going to do whatever you can to be accepted into the majority. And sure. Um, but you add a level of business in there. Yeah. Making money. And it, 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 you can do what you need to do. Yeah. And it turns, you know, we, I can't speak for all black folks. You're not the official I, spokesman? I know. Oh, <laughs> damn. What are you doing here? <laughs> you know, I know for me, it was a challenge. I mean, it was part of the reason why Shakis and Sharar had to separate. Like, well, I, you know, yes. black folks, right. You know, f for me, I felt like, okay, they're not. Even when it came down to my voice, I'm not going to be accepted if I talk like this. You know, if I right. really let the fact that I have a southern accent, I do have a draw. And, well, that know, I do say. So there's like, another one, and it's cool. Like, like I I used to um, transform the way that I talk. Like you couldn't even recognize it was the same. Mm -hmm. And it's something that you know we find funny amongst my friends and family members. Matter of fact, I got a cousin of mine. I ain't gonna put her on blast, but I got a cousin of mine. Like if you talk to her. When she's hanging out with me and then you call her voicemail, you would be like, who the fuck is that on the voicemail? Like, who is that person? Is that a robot? <laughs> who, what? Did you just try? And, and so, yeah, um, I didn't think about that. You, you, have you seen the movie, uh, Sorry to Bother You? No, I haven't seen You that. should watch Sorry okay. to Bother You. They do a great, the whole films, the, the nucleus of the film is based around that idea. Okay. And it's got Danny Glover in it. And right at the beginning of the film, Danny Glover shows a guy. Uh, it's a, it's a phone based. How company. he does it. Yeah, he shows a guy how he talks like a white guy, mm. and it's a uh, in order to do business, mm. and the film kind of germinates from there. But it's it's a wild. Film. I've had, but it really gives you a great understanding of the complexities around uh, trying to be something that you're not in order to fit in. But it all comes from a place that's in your head. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. real. And that film does a great job mm. of really unpacking that entire the entire spectrum of that train of thought yeah i've had people say to me you don't sound southern oh yeah i used to get you know, that a lot i'm too. like and, but but in the but, back of my head i'm like thank you but i used I'm to like, do why? that intentionally yeah you know i intentionally was trying not to right. sound southern right and, and you know i also told you before like i was a chameleon right so like well yeah i mean in addition to 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 me not uh, having the business voice and then the friend's voice yeah. and then the girl's voice also had the Shikis to Beast voice. Like I was literally a DJ on wow. radio. It, well, sure. Talking in a sure. microphone, you know, hosting mixtapes. So well, I had you, that whole voice. Why do, you know why do I mean? radio people and TV people talk like that? 
I have no idea. I mean, it's what training. Is it? It's yeah, training. But, but what is it, that? It, it, is it doesn't sound like a human. Whack. He don't sound like a human being. It's like, and it's it's interesting. It's one of the things that there are certain things I love about podcasting and certain things I hate about podcasting. And this is one of the things I love about podcasting is you get a chance to hear people actually talk. Yeah. Whereas yeah. on the news, there's automatically it's another weird. version. But, you know, and it's something I teach when I'm teaching media literacy. Um, that persona is created for a reason to communicate a message sure. to a certain demographic sure. of people, sure. which are usually going to be your middle age, white, leaning conservative majority, not yeah, yeah. offending pu public. Right, right? right. And so that, uh, that um, template was like designed by mm -hmm. journalism schools because it, 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 the majority of news stations, you want it to sound generic. You don't want to sound like a certain place. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, the, the sound needs to be unoffensive. You also need to take the emotion out of it so you don't feel a certain type of way. When sure. You're well, that, that's about important murder, probably. You read yeah. an article about a little baby. Whether somebody's dunk. guilty or not. You know, you guilty don't be like, or not. Right. You're guy. not. Yeah. yeah. So, but podcasting, I think, in my opinion, is making it harder for people to take news seriously. Yeah. Because right. it becomes so obvious that it's not their voice, you know, because you you hear some your your brain is more familiar with mm -hmm. how podcasting uh sounds. Right, right. And so now when you hear news, it it's like what? You know, it's yeah. like a it's a um it's something that humans on a large scale just haven't experienced that dichotomy before. You still watch so, the news? No. I, I stopped watching news so long ago. I think the news, I'm saying, yeah. you know, the 6 p.m., you know, early, I think it's going the way of the newspaper. Yeah. I mean, I, mean, I don't read the kinda, newspaper. It kind of has to, you know. Um, and I think that news media um, is having a hard time adapting because of all of those rules. I think so. You know, they're, they're hard and fast rules that well, and you have been see ingrained the, in journalism school. Yeah. And you, you see the news anchors, they all have podcasts now. Yeah. Like that's really how they're mm -hmm. communicating. Like, these offline shows and stuff. It's kind of strange. Yeah. And some of them take their news persona to the podcast. Some of right, them don't. Some right. of them is, is two different sides yeah, of yeah. the same coin. But I, I, I'm I, waiting, and it's bound to happen, on the first like news, mainstream news entity that's going to really lean into more of an authentic mm. approach than one that's be nice so curated i think i think it's bound to happen like it's i think it's bound to happen because i think um mm. it's part of the what social media has done to communication particularly mass media communication has changed the fabric of how uh people's expectation of information is through media yeah it's changed it where that's never been challenged before, right? News was news, newspaper was newspaper, radio was radio, you know, even radio jocks, you know, radio personalities had a thing. Yeah. And now it's Cody in the wild, yeah, man. There you go. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the news at five. John Billy. <laughs> what the hell? And it's like now, uh, uh, one of the things that social media has certainly done to that fabric is uh uh social media likes authenticity. Yeah, you know, it likes uh, yeah. Authenticity. Yeah. And so sooner or later, um, that's something that I believe mainstream entities are going to have to adapt. I'm curious to see mm -hmm. who's going to be the first one to to really. But a lot of it, you know, like everything else, Gene, a lot of it is tied to the way things have been done for a long time. Yeah, right. And those people are usually older. The, most of the times the people yeah. that control the strings are older. And deepest checkbook. They're not going to. Yeah. yeah, deepest checkbook. <laughs> they're, 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 we're not going to have this. Well, yeah. I'm not going to have that on my station. Yeah. Whatever. Paying for that, yeah, and and sometimes you gotta wait for those people to die. <laughs> I mean, it sounds sad. Well, it's, it happens. <laughs> it, <laughs> it happens. It does, man. It you happens. know, yeah, man. it really, yeah, you know, it's, it's a really, really, really wild, wild world. It's, I feel like we're living in this world that's constantly being shaped by the internet. Mm -hmm. Like every six months is like a new, it, yeah, society takes a new form. 
Yeah, oh, it does. Man, it's a, feels like it. It's it's cool, like yeah. to watch in real time it's because exhausting. we're we're literally living through a societal shift. Yeah, you know. Yeah, like think about when's the last time that human history has lived through a societal <sighs> shift. I think it's we're about to experience a big one. Hundreds of years, like even. You know, you take World War II or like a Great Depression, it wasn't this massive of a human societal shift. You know, it was it was certainly a shift, I, I would imagine, going from even, you know, going from the Berlin Wall coming down to, you know, it being up. That right, was right. a shift, but it wasn't as like social media and the way the internet works is really upending every single yeah. section of it is societal norm life and the last time human beings have had that on a scale like that was like uh the the in the industrial age right right when metal and trains and cars and uh, you know, smog in the air. Yeah, like, we you can know travel I mean? faster, like, yo, right? Is that a fa what the hell is a factory? You know what I mean? And Hershey just... saying, I'm going to build a town for my candy factory. And like, yeah. that was the last time right. everywhere people were like, what yeah. is happening? And, uh, you know, ma mass conspiracy theories and like, what is, you know, cars are going to eat you. And you know I mean? Like, you don't know, like, what is a train? And what the fuck? <laughs> Wait, you got here in a day? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was a massive... Yeah. Like upending of everything you thought was normal yeah. about the way humans interacted yeah, and changed. Change. And so it's a wild time to be alive. I just saw a project and I can't speak to it because I don't have the link in front of me, but it's like a pseudo art project, whatever. It's called Portals. I don't know if you've seen this. They're uh -huh. they've got like life size, like they're circular, but it's like a life size screen mm -hmm. that you can walk up to and it's got like a camera in the screen. So mm -hmm. when you walk up to it, there's one in like New York. There's one in like uh, Rome. They're, they're putting these things around and you literally can walk up to it and see the other person and talk to them. That's on the other side of it what? in the city they're in. It's, it's fascinating. And it's like your life size. You can walk up and talk. It's like they call it a portal. The only thing is you can't go through it, but right. you're, it's like this, this, uh, the idea, I guess, is to like, you know, we're smashing time and space together. You know, I can be in yeah. New York and immediately stand and talk to someone like, yeah, in real time. It's really trippy to think about, that's like, trippy that it's just and it's just on all the time. You can walk right up to it. You know, that's it's just like never, it's never, ever. Yeah, been a it's thing. trippy. Like, mm -hmm. even with cell phones, like when I call my lady right now, she's in Berlin. That's six hour difference. Yeah. And you, you know can I mean? FaceTime. But there's something different about FaceTime, that. But it's crystal clear, you know, super high resolution. Like, it looks like a portal. And it's got it's you know it's a, it's, it looks weird. like a little magic portal. It's almost like a life size FaceTime. It's pretty weird, but you know uh, it's mean? fascinating. Um, and ooh, that is uh, yeah. it almost reminds me of like Star Wars. You know, you have it like the higher felt the, uh, Star Trekky. It was like you know how yeah. they, they can talk to people. They had a little disc, and then oh, the, the little the hologram, hologram person. Would pop up yeah. right, right, yeah, 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 and yeah. you talk to the hologram. Yeah. It's like that. Yep. Ooh, pretty weird. So that, and then there's another story I just saw. Um, and I do have this one pulled up, but uh, this this mother recently was uh, called. It was like a scam, and they used an AI version of her daughter's voice to, to like, you know, like she was being kidnapped. And so she Oof. was like pretending to be kidnapped and saying things to her mom, like because they were like, "Listen to your daughter," and it was like an AI voice. Oof. And it fooled her. Like she was like, Shit, how do I go get a hundred thousand dollars or whatever? Um, yeah, we're 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 rapidly changing um the way we think about things. Uh I find it frightening, it exhilarating, yeah, and interesting at the same time. All at the same time. <laughs> it really is. It's all of those things at the same time. And it's hard for a lot of people to grasp. And you know, I've said this before on here, but it's the responsibility of the tech companies along with um government agencies along with corporate yeah. interests that have to they have to work together to figure out a way to slow down to allow time for people to adapt yeah um yeah, yeah. we've seen that you could go too fast or 
or sure. you have to retrain people to adapt one or the other at some point somebody's got to have to because uh, at this point it's no longer the dog wagging the tail anymore yeah it's not even that it's like the tail has broken off of the dog and created, <laughs> created another dog <laughs> an <laughs> exact replica that's dog. slightly yeah. different yeah that's how that's where yeah. we are and um you know uh i mean <laughs> you know there's only there's only two ways it can go yeah. you know either it works out for our good or it's literally going to work out for our bad yeah. like yeah. and um someone some entity it's so weird when i hear myself saying these things because i'm always <laughs> like who yeah. like who i'm always like thinking do i need to do that is that where i need to put my work yeah, you know what right? i mean because yeah. like i keep saying someone needs to do it and it's, it's like my constant, brain is going mm -hmm. like is, does that need to be me i remember you know because it has to be done and i can see it so then i start going like well, okay do i need to move yeah. otr in that direction because it's like yeah it's weird um, it, it just is, is, is critical. Like when you think about the implications of things like that and, um, what, and the reason why I say that trifecta is because the tech companies, there's no way they're going to do it. Why would they? No, the, the government make them. Yeah, agencies, they don't care. there's no way they're going to do it. Yeah. They got too much to do. The yeah. corporate interests have their own interest. So it has to be a. It has to be a triangular approach to figuring out. Yeah. Because the thing to me that, and, and I've said this before, that's illegal is no one. The thing to me that's illegal is society is pushing you into the space. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like electricity. We're not asking you, we're pushing you into it. Mm -hmm. We're saying everyone needs broadband internet, everybody needs a device. Right, this right. is where you need to go. Right. All your kids have laptops. You got to get grandma. You got to get the Facebook thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody got to come on in this world yeah. and, you're, and we're all being pushed. We're not, Yeah. you know, you're not doing it on your own. Mm -mm. You know, you go to basketball or sports games. Now they're like, no, we don't take cash anymore. You yeah. go to a bar. They're like, you got to use your phone to yeah. buy right. a beer. You know what I mean? Like Weird. you're being forced into this world, mm -hmm. a device based world. And so if, if that is what you're going to do, and you're going to force me to adapt to a world, you've got to teach me how to operate in that world. Yeah, like that, that is your obligation. And, and, and tech companies aren't, they're not designed to teach mm -hmm. you how to understand laws and how things work. That's what government. Right. Do. The iPhone literally doesn't come with a instruction manual. I mean, it does. Right. Okay. Does it? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> nobody, nobody. Oh shit. Nobody, nobody reads the instruction manual. Oh, no. Like all phones come with an instruction manual. Oh, like shit. when you open it, like it comes with a instruction manual. That's true. Manual. There's a little book. Yeah. In the back. A, no, who takes the book out? No, I threw that thing away. <laughs> nobody does, right? Like nobody toss. does. I, and, and I say this all the time when I'm on your podcast. Like nobody actually knows how to use their device. We, yeah, no. None of us know how well, to use no. these devices, right? It's not like a truck, you know, from you know 1962 where you'd be like engine yeah. transmission yep. that goes to the windshield wipers mm -hmm. that's gone yeah nope. like now it's we just go to the store and say help give me a new one <laughs> yeah <laughs> fix it yeah. and then they give it back and you go yeah. it works it works and you now. walk out of yeah. the store like, i can use it yeah we, we have no idea how these devices work <laughs> no. so you know people shouldn't be surprised when things like ai pop up yeah i'm not surprised because i'm like of course you yeah, don't know right. how that shit works yeah you bought an Alexa. Do you know how Alexa works? I don't you have know. no fucking idea how mm -hmm. Alexa works. You just think it's cool. But how does it work? I don't know. They so frighten me. We do ours away. <laughs> should it be any surprise to you when Alexa starts talking by itself or not? Like it shouldn't. It did not like get it out of the house. Because <laughs> you really don't know how it works. Yeah. And this is the, this is also the first time in human history that's ever happened. This has never happened. Right. Right. Never in the entire history of the human race yeah. have we had tools that we don't know how to use. I don't know where that I just, just never happened. I don't know where this I just the heard first it. time for sure. Uh, maybe it was Jordan Peterson on a podcast, but he was he was equating uh, YouTube and the advent of like video on the internet being almost as important as important as like Gutenberg's press. Yes, like because it's like. Well, now we there's just like all this video on the internet constantly, constantly, you know, and it's like, yeah, I'm with you. I don't know how it got there. No, <laughs> like what? I don't know how it works, yeah. how to like, you know, fix it. Like yeah. you can't 
fix that laptop if you yeah to fix i can't or you know if i need my phone to do yeah. i have no i i don't know i have yeah. no idea how yeah, it's i know and yeah. and we've accepted it yeah which is the other mastery of technology we've accepted the fact that we don't know yeah. so our so you know it, it's funny because we don't even know that we have stupid responses right <laughs> Right. We don't think that our responses to something we don't know is stupid, yeah. but it's actually stupid yeah, because right. a stupid response is turn it off. Right. Right. We think that's a logical response, <laughs> but the only reason we can go to turn it off is because we don't know what else to do. Right. Right. right? <laughs> but you should you should know that yeah. turn it off is not a solution. Right. Turn it off is just saying run. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Running is not a solution. Right. Just sooner or later, if you keep you're running, gonna, you're going to get tired. Yeah, yeah. You're human. You're not yeah, a robot. Right. <laughs> you breathe. You you need water, That's bread. <laughs> you know what I mean? So people just go turn it off. That's not a solution, no. bro. No. No. Right. Yeah. If I turn my phone off, sooner or later, I might have to turn it back on. Yeah, I, you're going a, to need a billion other phones too. the world we live yeah, in. Right. You have to interact with devices. You gotta like, learn how to wield it for you sure. Could, you could cut your phone off. You still gotta go to the airport. Yeah. You know what the lady in front of you is going to be using a device. Mm -hmm. You know what you're going to look at when you yeah. find out when your plane is coming. A device. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it doesn't for matter sure. if you want to watch TV device, yep. like yep. it's literally device run. And so, mm -hmm. um, it's a wild. That's what I said, man. It's, it's a wow. Like we're yeah. doing all this. And on top of all that, we're doing things like mindfulness now. Right. We're doing things like self-care. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, nope, you can't talk about women like that yeah, anymore. Right. People are offended when you say that. Like yeah. all of this is happening. Like all yeah. the not gender yeah, is changing. This is all happening at the same exact time. Yeah, it is. Whew, what a time to I be know. alive. I mean, we're all going to be in history books. Yeah. You no, know, we're going to be in history videos. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we are. <laughs> we are. But you know how you have those moments in history that's like, you know, yeah. the uh the um you know, the enlightenment age. Yeah, right. The right. Stone, For sure. Like this what are they is one call of those periods. One? I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna call this. I guess it would be the tech age, yeah. right? The great the dip shittering. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna call it. It's the tech age, man. Yeah, yeah, I would think it would be called or the AI we call it in the media literacy world, we call it the age of screens. Yeah. For sure. Age of screens. We're in a screen yeah. age. I think about world. that. I go from screen to screen. to screen to get in my car. There's a screen. Yeah. Yeah. It's all screens. Yeah. You know. God damn it. And uh, yeah, it's it's a wild, wild world that we're all trying mm. to figure out how to adapt to, and, and uh, all at the same time. So I think we got. That's, I think that's why I think we gotta give people grace, man. Yeah. Like for all sure. this shit is new. It's all new. For sure. All and every time you think you're. It, it, it's oh. so funny to me. Have you encountered these people that are like, I embrace the new, right? Right. And I'm like, until yeah, until it yes, until it gets you too. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. it's gonna get like, you know. Yeah. So you might be an AI advocate, right? Right. But you know, it, you know, you're an advocate what, for this version of what AI this is right version now. Version of yeah. what it is right mm -hmm. now, but it could be something else over to you. Whether that you know yeah. is gender or the way people identify, or yeah. the fact that you know my son paints his nails. Like I don't have no problem. It don't phase me at all. But my uncle is like, what? Yeah, <laughs> right. right. You see, what I'm saying like Just it's going to be something because they're so like you. The, the idea that you could just say embrace the new i mean it's just such a it's such a lame yeah. short sighted like you can't it's not real it's not there's no way you can embrace all the new and be okay with all no. the new at one time when it's this much it's fast man it's not realistic yeah you know your brain our the human brain can only process so yeah. much information at one time yeah so someone especially mine has to yeah. remember gene that we're humans mm -hmm. somebody's got to go hey everybody all this stuff is cool <laughs> calm shit. down but can yeah. we? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> these are human beings man yeah. god damn it like yeah. we make mistakes because i say dumb shit i mean clearly right i robot is next right yeah because if somebody right. doesn't slow down and say hey man right. we're humans they, right. they're just gonna go well we'll just make a human yeah right right we'll just make a human that can adapt yeah. faster Hmm. You got yeah. then what? I don't know. Then you got humans that are humanoids that are fat, you know, which would be a logical thing for a tech person to do. I, I, sure. I don't, even you know, I would, you know, probably like, already exists, man. Yeah, like, Come on. you know, 
if humans are too slow to adapt, I have these things I created that can adapt. Just download yeah. the information and boom, there they go. So we can really, you know, humans can be good well, for that like, was, you know. That's the deal with Skynet, right? It, it determined that yep. humans were the worst thing for the planet. So therefore, we're going to make the planet last. So we got to get rid of the humans. We'll just use them as batteries. Shit. They yeah. can do that. Yeah. The Matrix. Yeah. Put you in the. <laughs> good for something. Maybe we'll just eat them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, on that apocalyptic note. Oh my God, how did we get there? It's a fun conversation. It was. I didn't. I didn't expect it to be about split personalities, but nah, that was that was cool. Um, that was cool. I feel better. Yeah, <laughs> I always like talking to you, Gene. Thank you for my therapy session. Yeah, you, <laughs> you always make make sense, and you, awesome. you're always always logical. Thank you. And, and curious, and it's always a pleasant conversation, and yeah. you always keep it real, and uh, oh. I appreciate that, bro. Oh, thank you. We'll get you back again. I love to.